I brought two suitcases. I brought excitement, naive self-confidence, optimism, the usual useful follies of youth. But I didn't move to Chengdu. I crash landed here. I became one of eight million souls in the city. That number made itself known in the sea of apartment buildings, in the winter smog, in the pit of my stomach. I spent most of my money on the plane ticket. I found out on arrival it wasn't getting reimbursed till after a year. Found out on arrival that I had to pay five months of rent up front. I borrowed money from my company with no small amount of personal shame. I didn't know anybody in the city. I lived on rice and rice porridge. I bought only blankets to ward off the winter cold. I still slept in my coat. My mattress was fabric pulled over an inch of hard frame. I developed hip pain from sleeping on the hard mattress. After two weeks, I had to down the maximum dosage of Advil with several swigs of the cheapest Baijiu just to get to sleep. As it wore off, the pain would wake me in the middle of the night, insisting that I down the next batch of Advil. I couldn't solve my problems alone. Only knowing English left me functionally an illiterate deaf mute. I spent my first spring festival alone on my complex rooftop with a bottle of wine, riding a cab along what I would later discover is the second ring road of five. I really began to wonder, what the hell have I gotten myself into here? Ubiquitous physical presences, like blocky concrete buildings, became part of the norm I had to relearn. Shabby became synonymous with affordable, especially on my shoestring budget. The upscale shops sold the same fruit at three or four times the price for some wasteful packaging. The wet markets seemed terribly unhygienic. It was one thing to have fruit and veg in open air, and quite another to have raw meat, occasionally entire carcasses exposed to the air and flies. I felt myself rather prudish. The locals did not mind a bit, and eventually, I bought some and cooked it thoroughly. I still know nothing about food standards, but I didn't die or get sick, so I assume everything is fine. Everything just felt horribly lonely. Looking off the rooftop into a city drowned in smog, eight million souls and I knew none of them. Red lights blinking on the top of buildings. A city made of concrete and dull, soulless lights. But in the daylight, from that rooftop, I didn't feel alone in this city of millions. From that rooftop, I was at home in a world of opportunity, waiting to be explored.